Hello, David here, and welcome to a tutorial on the Kawasaki Robots KRCC Connectivity Plugin in Visual Components. When following any tutorial, check the lesson in the Visual Components Academy, and if the Download Files option appears, you can download the example files. For this tutorial, we will enable the Visual Components Connectivity feature. And for the robot controller, we are using Kawasaki's KROSET Lite software and its virtual controller. Information on where to download any additional software components will be included in the video description. To enable the connectivity feature, go to File, Options, Add-on, and click to enable connectivity. Then click OK below and restart the application. In this tutorial, we first look at the simulation model. Then we create the virtual controller. We post process the visual components program to native robot language. And finally, we use the connectivity plugin to create a connection between visual components and the virtual controller. We are in the program tab and let's first take a look at the simulation model. We click play to run the simulation where we have an injection molding machine and a Kawasaki robot tending it. When molding is done, the robot gets the product from the machine and places it on the conveyor. And the cycle continues. And then resetting the simulation with the robot selected so we can see its subprograms in the panel on the left, the main program of the robot looks like this. Let's open the signal editor above and select the robot to check its signal connections. On the robot, output 1 is used as a grasp and release signal action. Output 2 is connected to the machine. And from the machine, we get a signal back to robot input 1001. In the Kawasaki controller, output signals start from index 1 onward and input signals use an index from 1001 onward. Let's close the signal editor by clicking the Signals Tool control once more. Over on the right, let's check some details of the robot's component properties. Under Actions Configuration, on Signal Actions, at Output 2, we have disabled all the signal actions. And in the Signal Actions tab above, we have modified some of the signal action properties to make it easier to simulate the grasping and releasing of the product. For the post processor, we have used the post processor once already on this robot, and which created some extra properties on the component. So, for example, on the download tab, these are some of the post processor settings, and we have enabled these two properties bases as transform and tools as transform, which just streamlines the synchronization of data between visual components and the virtual controller. The robot we use here is the RS6L. So let's now go to KROSET and create the virtual controller. Let's start by creating a new project, which we will name IMM for injection molding machine and click OK. On the layout tree in the upper left, we right click and add a robot. Choose the handling application, F-series controller and R-series robot and select the RS6L and click OK. Now the virtual controller has been created and we see the robot in KRO set. So let's now return to visual components. Before we make a connection, in the Executor tab of the Robots Component Properties on the right, let's disable the Is Enabled property so that the simulation will not use the Visual Components program anymore. Before we post process the program, there's one limitation that we need to consider. In the main program on the left, there's one Wait Input statement. The Connectivity plugin has a limitation where it cannot write the input signals on the virtual controller. Therefore, we cannot simulate this wait state input statement as is. However, the plugin is able to write output signals. 
so we can use that as a workaround. So let's select this statement and modify the input port to use the input signal index from the output signal range. And since we have outputs 1 and 2 already in use, the next free output index is 3. So let's use that as the weight input signal statement here. Now let's post process the program. So from the ribbon above, select post process and under Kawasaki, click download. Using the PG file format, let's name the program imm.pg. And to save the file to our downloads folder, click save and click OK. And now let's go to KROSET and load this program. In KROSET Lite in the bottom left, click on the controller tab and click the load button. Navigate to our downloads folder and select the imm.pg file we saved and click open. And now we need to define the entry point of our program. So we select the main routine imm, which uses the same name as the file itself. Now we can run the program, but first we need to enable the motors on the controller by clicking the motor button here. And then we can click the play button to run the program. We can see the robot moving to the wait position, and it's now waiting for an input signal from the machine. One thing to note about the KROSET Lite is that its simulation speed is not real time speed but it is simulating motions as fast as possible. In the full version of KROSET, you can use the simulation plugin to change it to real-time speed. Now that we are using the free version, our only option to slow down the execution is to enable the pendant, so we click Show Pendant, and click here for the speed, and decrease the execution speed to let's say 20% of the maximum speed. Let's then return to Visual Components and create a connection. And in the Connectivity tab and on Kawasaki Robot on the left, right click and select Add Server. We are using the default settings and we click Test Connection. The connection succeeded, so we click OK and then apply in the lower right corner. We can now connect to the server by clicking the Server Connect control for our Kawasaki robot. And now let's pair some variables. So first, on the server to simulation variable group, right click and select add variables. If in the create variable pairs panel, you don't see the tree appearing on the left side, you can right click and select reload simulation structure. So first, let's pair the joint values. So on the simulation tree, open the RS6L robot, then behaviors and the controller, where we can see all the six axis nodes. We can filter by typing value to show the value property for each joint node. On the virtual controller tree on the right, open the RS6L node and then movement, where we can see all the joint values. So let's pair all the six joints using the Pair Selected button. And we can see the paired variables being added below. And now that we have the joints paired, next let's pair the outputs. So making sure that you have signal maps enabled above, open the outputs tree. And on the virtual controller tree on the right, open I.O. and output. Let's first pair output number one and click pair selected. And then we need to navigate and pair also output number two and again click pair selected. So now we have outputs one and two paired. Next, let's pair a variable on the simulation to server group. So then selecting the simulation to server variable group on the left. On the simulation, we will need to pair input 1001, so we can filter using that as a keyword. And with that input selected, on the server side, 
we cannot use that input 1001 because we cannot write its value. But we created a workaround where we use the output at index 3 instead. So we select output 3 on the server side and click pair selected to pair the variable. And now that we have the variables paired, we can close the create variable pairs panel. Now let's test the connection. And before doing that, we can place the applications side by side. So holding the Windows key, use the left arrow key to place visual components on the left side of the screen. And select K row set to place it on the right. And in visual components, using the push pin control, we can hide the component properties and connectivity configuration panels. And in K row set, we will drag the teach pendant over to the right side of the screen. In K row set, we already have the program running, so we only need to press play to run the simulation in visual components. And once the injection molding machine is ready, it gives the signal and the robot proceeds. And the cycle continues so that another product is picked and placed on the conveyor. To display the connected variables panel, click show variables above. And if we need to debug the system, we can drag up the connected variables panel And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.